One of my subscribers asked me how I keep my uh, air dry before it gets to the sandblaster. And what you're seeing in the camera right now is how I dry the air. Now this is something it's so uh, so so basic that I wasn't even going to address it if if I hadn't had it requested. Uh, but now that someone asked about it, I'll you know explain this a little bit. What you're seeing there uh, are converted uh, water filter housings. I come up with this here a few years ago. And I even made a, a little pamphlet, a little ebook or whatever you want to call it, called the Kitty Litter Air Dryer, where I show you how to convert uh, water filter housing into an air dryer. So anyone who had an you know air compressor of any size in their garage could easily make uh, an air dryer, and you know cheaply and effectively, and not have to spend three or four hundred dollars on a desiccant air dryer commercial unit. Uh, just you know for doing basic sandblasting um, at your house now usually two filters isn't necessary I had to come up with a pre filter and a post filter with my old air compressor because it was starting to weep a little bit of oil mist uh, to the point where it's coating the inside of my air lines and coming out in the sandblast around my parts which is contaminated the surface of the parts so what I did was this one I filled with uh, bentonite clay, also known as kitty litter, and that took out um, the oil filter or the oil, and it also filtered out the you know some of the moisture. And then this is a post filter or finishing filter that took care of the moisture. And that one is filled just with silica gel. Now silica gel is also a form of kitty litter. It's just an expensive type of kitty litter. And it, in silica gel is very effective at removing moisture. It's highly uh, absorbing, and it can hold a huge amount of water uh, within its um, structure. The top. This is not indicating silica gel. Uh, in other words, it doesn't change color when it gets wet. But you'll see right here at the top where it's darker. That's where it's saturated and that the bottom is still relatively dry. Nice thing about that is you can take that silica gel out, put it in a 9 by 13 cake pan, and put it in the oven and regenerate it at, I forget the temperature now, I always forget the temperature even though I've done it so often. I think it's 300 degrees uh, for a couple hours and drive that moisture out. So you don't have to worry about buying it over and over again. It's, it's good stuff as long as you don't contaminate it with oil. One of the things I was concerned about when I first started converting these filter housings was the um, the strength of them, the bursting pressure. I mean, are these things going to explode was what was mostly on my mind. Now, these things typically have a maximum operating pressure of 125 pounds per square inch. So I was real careful to keep that uh, air pressure lower than that. And I don't use that anyways when I'm blasting, you know, that much pressure, but I was real careful about that. What I would recommend to anyone doing this though is to run a blow-off valve uh, upstream of these things. In other words, between the compressor and these housings, run a safety relief valve or blow-off valve, pop-off valve, whatever you want to name it. Uh, it's similar to the valves on a hot water tank that once it gets above a certain pressure, it releases the pressure inside the tank so the tank itself doesn't explode. And you definitely don't want one of these exploding full of silica gel. It could cause a lot of injury. So you can get those uh, safety blow-off valves from McMaster Car. Uh, you know they're widely used, and it will. What it will do is once it gets over that maximum pressure, it'll instantaneously drop the line pressure back down to you know where it's manageable. Now that being said, the one comforting fact about this is that I looked up the NSF testing standards on these housings and found that uh, these housings are actually tested at 300 PSI or three times the oper the uh, maximum operating pressure for 15 minutes and they're not allowed to leak. Now they don't say anything about taking them up to a pressure where they explode but they have to at least go up to 300 PSI for 15 minutes without leaking. So you know they're capable of that. They also have to be tested at 150 PSI 
uh, for 100,000 cycles. In other words, they drop the pressure slightly and take it back up to 150, and they do that 100,000 times. So, and they can't leak in that in that amount of time. So that should tell you what these things are actually capable of. You know, how many years they can do this, I don't know. And if you know if they're exposed to oil, I don't know. But anyways, that's when they're new. That's what they're supposed to be capable of. So that's a little bit of peace of mind there, but I still you need to put a blow off valve on there for extra safety. Since I have to keep this video kind of short today, uh, I'm not going to really get in, into the construction. Uh, I, w I will say that it is very simple. You see this one here in the back, there's a white pipe running up and down. Uh, the air comes in one side, down through the desiccant, and up through that pipe, and out through the outlet. Uh, of course, there's a little bit more details about getting the pipe length and keeping the desiccant inside the housing and sealing it properly. But, you know, fundamentally, that is how it works. It's, it's just that basic, really. This one was based on my first design. Uh, this was my second design. I made some modifications uh, to make it easier to seal. But it's, it's the same, basically the same operation again. But if this video generates enough interest, I'll do another video on how to construct one of these things and maybe even make the, that uh, pamphlet available again for sale for, I don't know, three or four bucks or something. You know, just as a guide to kind of refer back to as you're building one of these things. Because uh, I can usually think of more details whenever I'm writing than whenever I'm making a video. For those of you who are do-it-yourselfers and you do some sandblasting in your garage, uh, this is a, a good setup to do some light sandblasting. Uh, this thing will get your line moisture down to a point where it's manageable and you won't get be spitting water out of the sandblaster and it won't be clogging up and well you if you've been there you know exactly what I'm talking about. Tools won't rust on the inside your air tools so um, so if you found it interesting, uh, that's great. You know, give it a thumbs up if you would please. And um, I guess that's it. I'll be seeing you next video.